We are at Holden Bros. And yo, y'all broke the uh, you broke the Cuda. Yeah, man, we were just trying to go for an easy jump drive. <laughs> jump. And drunk and drive. Yeah, we had, had too many drinks, and Steven was driving actually, and I was saying like, Classic. I was like, hey man, you should slow down. And he's and like, I was hard on the brakes. And he's like, nah. And so the axle <laughs> fell out. The axle happened. fell out. Yeah. We've been driving around without four wheel drive because we had not matching gears and you don't want to do that or you will break some stuff so we got new gears from yukon in the front axle now to match right yes and that's not all yukon sent man yukon like everybody loves matt a lot so they spent they sent hardcore hubs we actually have their unbreakable outer u-joints um, a box full of 4340 chromoly shafts yeah, buddy. Inners and outers yeah way strong these are big boys um the hubs are chromoly as well so these are basically unbreakable we have a 410 ring and pinion set and the diff cover, so. And I haven't told them about my idea of lowering it. I want y'all's opinion. Well, you can't really see it right now. It's too high. We're gonna go down like two or three inches. Yes. I think. And I kind of, I went to Brandon and I told him about that and he was like, I don't wanna do that. And I was like, oh, maybe I'm crazy. And I went to them and they were like, I think it needs to be yeah. lowered too. Yeah, if Matt was looking for the majority share in votes, I think, <laughs> he got it. So yeah. I'm Brandon. It's just like, that actually, the back's sitting about where it sits, right? It yeah, looks, really cool. has a little bit of weight on it. So, yeah, it's, it's probably an inch or two high, but it just needs to come like, I just don't want to see air through there. Down. We were, yeah. Like you were saying, Matt, there's just a little bit of like, like this air gap. Yeah. Right? We want to get that to just sit below. Yep, the, right there. I think the that tire. would look so perfect. I do too. I think it's it would... still high, but it's not, it just looks like it's floating above the whole drivetrain yeah. to me. I don't think it's going to take anything away from it. Nah. All right, so we're going to do that. Um, you want to show what we found on the old ranch tank? Yes. <laughs> First off, I got to give some credit to two guys, the Stradman brothers. That's Ryan and Paul. They're uh, south of Pleasanton. They're good friends of ours. And uh, Ryan actually stopped by the shop for something else. And we were showing him what was going on because he was interested in the car. A lot of people know the car. He's like, man, what's going on? We're like, dude, we can't get it to run and we can't figure out really why. We've tested a lot of things and we're fixing to get to the point where we start tearing the we, motor down. Y'all found a few things that were wrong, but nothing that would stop it from exactly. running. Exactly, yeah. We found like little odds and ends and we kind of took care of all that stuff and we were making plenty of ICP, high pressure oil. We were making plenty of low pressure oil. They honed out one of the cylinders. Yeah, we pulled that down, ball honed the thing, cleaned all that up because well, there's a, another reason for that, but still, we, we were checking for metal and the oil. We were looking for everything. Get it running and it would run for about a second and a half and turn off. And then we started having reversion issues where we were actually blowing exhaust gas through the intake. And we're like, That's odd. How is that possible? <laughs> no bent push rods, cam lobes perfect, lift is there. So Ryan says, uh, Hey, dude, let me come over here with my brother and we'll bring all of our stuff and we'll spend a few hours. So they did. They came over on a Saturday. They were up here for about, I don't know, probably four and a half hours. They yep. tested all kinds of stuff. Those guys are really, really smart. Bottom line is the inside of this pipe. Which is what goes from the exhaust manifold yep. up to the it's turbo. It connects here. the cylinder head up to- Exhaust comes out right here and it goes through this pipe- To this guy. To right yep. here, to our turbo. So we were cranking and it was holding pressure on the exhaust stroke. Not supposed to do that. And he goes, hey, something's plugging the exhaust. We're like, no, there's not. Yeah, no way. He's like. No, there is. And we pulled it apart and there was. Look at this. It's a it's, squirrel. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> no. There is a piece of metal that flapped down. It got so hot it melted. Flapped down. Let me get a light shining there. It flapped down and totally blocked the lumen of that pipe. Completely closed and welded shut. Yeah, no, like, like air doesn't pass through there at all. So we put this washer on here because when the when this car was going to come off the road forever, the EGR was actually leaking and busted. We had to weld this washer on. So we didn't do anything other than weld the washer onto that flange. Didn't think anything of the pipe. Section this. I would have thought this would have failed before that. Yeah. But on the inside of this, I don't know if this is factory or not, but when they cut this hole and laid this over the top, the remainder of this piece of pipe was still inside there. And so this got freaking glowing red hot on the inside, like y'all saw, this was like full glowing red. It turned molten and laid over and actually <laughs> sealed the freaking hole and yeah, turned the I, motor off. You would think it would have like folded past with the- Or just like, I would think it would just like- Out the turbo. Yeah, just like liquid yeah. metal would be like flying through the turbo. Yeah. But it, yeah. It, but instead just, it just bent down and went bloop yeah. and 
just four it was when a I, valve and just shut closed when i say sealed i mean sealed this is like hermetically airtight in outer space dude sealed. let's put water in it and see if any water comes through dude. <laughs> it's totally sealed dude not a drop dude. it welded itself completely shut <laughs> <laughs> All right, now tug that for how hard you work. Yeah, you this won't. This is for you, man. You won't. Still got air in the oil. That's what all diesel guys say when it doesn't start. Ah, it's got air in the oil. Yeah, buddy. It's a mean machine. So we have an engine again. Yay! So we're excited. Dude. So, and we're gonna run this thing. Dude, what is the date? It's Cletus and Cars November... 19th. Somewhere in there. 19th. 18th, 19th. It's the 19th. In Florida. So if you guys wanna come see it, Ranch Chain's gonna burn it down. Probably actually literally will burn something down. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's kinda what it does. <laughs> At least this time we'll make sure that the molten metal passes through the turbo. Yeah, yeah, it just shoots molten metal out that. <laughs> that's the goal. Well, how are the goats doing? How do you like being a goat owner? Great. Good. Hello, Rocky. Uh, the goats are doing great. Um, <laughs> they're all like. I can see you. Way more comfortable with people. They were, you know, they'd never really been around people when we got them, and so now they're all just super chill. They will walk up to you and. Curly. That's Curly. Curly's got a little white on her head. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's funny. Know that. uh -uh. That's how we tell them apart. Well, I mean, I know that. That one has a lot of white on its head, but I didn't know she had any. I thought so she was all brown. These two apart. Well, he's lighter, this and his ears are like, his ears are tilted like this one curled. Is white. Have y'all ever seen goats with the ears that look like that? I've never seen that. Both of his ears are folded up, and Tell curly. Me in the comments. Wait, does which one chews on his ears? This one, right? Yeah. She chews on his ears a ton. Yeah. She does. She chew on her ears. Yeah. Okay. Hi. I mean, look at this. These little goats just love people he's now. Grabbing him a shoulder ride. They Did she? Curly just, yep. Yeah, Curly just scratched her. It's probably helpful that the kids just carry the goats around everywhere, but like, I mean, before you'd pet their heads and they would be like, whoa, whoa, and they'd shy away because they didn't know what you were doing. But now they're just like all over it. They're like, hey, you got any food? I'll take some milk. Got a bottle? <laughs> Pretty cute little things. So we have a fence done. Uh, we got about two acres fenced off down here that they will move into when they're too big to stay in the little kennel in the garage. Once they're big enough that they can be outside and everything, we'll put them out here. We don't have water down there or a shelter yet, so I need to get on building some kind of little, little lean-to kind of barn thing that they can, you know, get out of the rain, get out of the wind, that kind of thing, so they can stay warm this winter. All right, here it is. This is our gate. We need to paint it and, uh, what? They can get out. Well, yeah, I, I'm not really sure why he hung this gate so high we're gonna either have to rehang it or just put an extension there because i mean demo is a hundred pounds and he could get out of that so we need to fix that gate but fence is nice fence goes all the way down there all the way over there sure go for it you gonna let the goats explore i was gonna cut out all the cedar trees in here i made a video where we we were clearing the just the lane for the fence to go and so you can see all these cedar trees we cut out already and i was gonna kind of keep cutting out um cedar trees just to make it easier to walk through and everybody's like matt just leave them for the goats so that is a good idea i want to cut them out eventually but i mean they're going to eat all the lower stuff like this but then they'll leave all the woody stuff and so i'll probably just let them eat all that lower stuff and then i'll come in later and you know once it looks like this i'll just trim them all up because i want it to look nice i want grass to start growing in here better and it can't grow right now when it's like you know just all this brush it's just not going to come in thick it's going to look like that covered up with all these needles that fall but there's good dirt down there and I want this kind of grass to grow up really tall in here so I'm gonna slowly over the next it'll probably be a few seasons just try to work on this and get it to where it's nice and open and we have grass growing in here and yeah it'll be really pretty too because right now it's just yeah you just can't see very far Annie do they like the new cage think, think so they haven't really explored it yet. they're so tiny and cute so if you try to eat the string. Yep. <laughs> she heard that. <laughs> what was that? 
That was just that gas can flexing in the heat. <laughs> That's pretty cute. <laughs> I think we're gonna put the little shelter right here. Get my bobcat. I'll flatten it out a little bit, and then yeah, build some sort of uh, shelter just to block the wind and the rain. Have a little spot in the back where they can get in. If it's like a really cold, wet day, they can get in here and be totally dry. And probably figure out a way to make it to where water isn't running and going like under and going through. You know, just build a little thing around it so the water goes around this thing. If it does, I don't think water flows a lot here, but just want to make sure that, especially because it's about to get cold here in Texas, and these guys are going to be little for most of the winter. Look at that! <laughs> Dude, this dog is the best. He just loves these little things. Just walking this fence line, checking it all out. I'm going uphill right now, so I'm a little winded. And I was just looking up, and I was thinking, the moon is not real, right? How does it look like that? That doesn't make any sense. And how's it floating up there? That doesn't make any sense. Nothing about the moon makes sense. If you think about it, Moon's not real. My neighbor showed me this kind of YouTube documentary. It's like a 10 minute long video on YouTube, but it was documentary style. And it was one of the owners of Church's Chicken before they sold. He's one of the original owners and they sold this company. He made a lot of money, he bought a big ranch out in Johnson City, Texas. And it was covered in these cedar trees, which are actually called like junipers, I think. Uh, we always call them just cedars. But they suck a ton of water out of the land. He said he went in and cleared all the cedars out and then all the native grasses came back in and dirt filled in. Anybody know anything about that? Is that real life? Because like we have some, you know, that's a Spanish oak. You can see oak trees up there. Um, that is an oak tree right there. There's oak trees in here, really pretty oak trees. I don't know, that one's pretty scraggly. But I mean, they could be pretty, but then they're just, the ground is just covered with cedars, which they do help hold some of the dirt, keep it from washing away. But I think they also choke out a lot of the grass, which also would hold the dirt and keep the dirt from washing away. So what are your thoughts, those who know about it, about clearing out cedars? Will grass come in? Because I like, I don't hate the look of the cedars, but I would love I had some nice grassy hills. But he was saying he cleared out all the cedars, grass came in, and grass helped catch the water and hold it and kind of let it leach down into the soil, filling up the water table instead of just running off the land because cedars usually, you know, they have uh, just a lot of rocky stuff around them. But they also grow really well in rocky stuff. So anyway, um, those who know about land management and getting grass to grow, how do we get all these native grasses to just fill in thick here without all these cedar trees everywhere? Is it possible? He also worked the land for like, I don't know, 30 years or something. So I know it's not like I go in and cut the cedars and next year there's beautiful grass and dirt everywhere. He like said he spread grass seed and everything. So I don't know, I was trying to figure out if it's worth our while to clear out some cedars and get some pretty hillsides over here or if it won't work. Camera's that number. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell Mayor.